Welcome to our study today. We are studying basic facts of the faith. Today our topic of discussion is concerning the second coming of Christ. People are interested in the second coming of Christ. Every few years, someone will come along setting the date for our Lord's return. In fact, one of the most popular religious subjects in the past 50 years has been teaching that Jesus is going to come back to this earth. He is going to set up his kingdom and reign on the earth for 1,000 years. This doctrine is called premillennialism. People have made a great deal of money from promoting this doctrine. There have been maps made that are supposed to show you how to get through the tribulation. Posters have been printed. Bumper stickers have been available for automobiles. Books and movies have been produced to promote this doctrine. A host of preachers in the religious world preach this doctrine. It may be as many as 90% of denominational preachers who believe this particular doctrine. And there are even some in the church who believe and teach this doctrine. If we took a survey in a normal town in the United States and asked every person if they believe Christ was going to set up an earthly kingdom, the majority would probably say yes. Well, what about this teaching? Can it be proved in the Bible, or is it just the doctrine of men? In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, Paul says, Test all things, hold fast what is good. Jesus said in Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus tells us in John 7, 17, If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is of God or whether I speak on my own authority. What does this theory or doctrine include? It includes the idea that the first time Jesus came to the earth, he came to establish his kingdom. But since many Jews rejected him, he did not set up his kingdom, but he set up a temporary institution, that is, the church. But the New Testament refutes this claim. In Ephesians 3, Paul tells us that the church was planned before the foundation of the world. This doctrine, the doctrine of premillennialism, claims that the kingdom and church are not the same. But Jesus promised to establish his church, his kingdom, in Matthew 16, verses 18 and 19, he says, I will build my church, and I will give unto thee, that is Peter, I will give unto you, Peter, the keys of the kingdom. And the apostle Peter used those keys on the day of Pentecost, as recorded in Acts chapter 2, to open the door of the kingdom to the Jews. And then he used the keys again in Acts chapter 10 to open the door of the kingdom to the Gentiles. In the first century, the Bible says that the kingdom was already in existence because Paul said God had translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love, Colossians 1 and verse 13. And the apostle John writing in Revelation 1 and verse 9 points out that he was their brother in the kingdom. Well, in order for him to be the brother of other Christians in the kingdom, the kingdom had to be in existence. Premillennialism teaches that there are many signs before Christ's coming. It implies God failed in his first attempt 
to establish a kingdom that's mentioned in the Old Testament. It says he failed. Can you imagine somebody saying that God failed in something that he tried to do? It teaches that Christ will reign on a literal throne in a literal temple in literal Jerusalem. This doctrine is not true. It is not supported by the teachings found in the Bible. In this lesson, we will examine the scriptures to see what it does teach in regard to the time that Christ comes again. And so we ask the first question in this study, is Christ coming again? And of course, the answer to that question is, he is definitely coming again. We open our Bibles to Acts chapter 1, and we read verses 9 through 11. This is at the time of the ascension of Christ, and the Bible records in Acts 1, beginning in verse 9. Now, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And so those men that stood beside the apostles said, Jesus will so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Christ is going to return. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men to die once, but after this, the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. And then Peter spends a great deal of time talking about the fact that Christ is going to return. And so because he has written so much on the subject, we're going to open our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 9, where Peter talks about the events surrounding the second coming of Christ. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." Note what Peter has to say here. There were some coming along and saying that Christ was not going to return, and they were scoffing at that. And know what they say. They say, For since the fathers fell asleep, 
all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And Peter answers in verse 5 by saying, they willfully forget about the flood. When God destroyed the world by flood, as recorded in the book of Genesis. And then he says in verse 7, the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word that destroyed the earth by flood, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So Peter says, Christ is going to come back. And then in verse 8, he says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. In God's eyes, time does not really make that much difference. Now you think about it. Two days ago, you can remember very clearly what you did. But can you remember what happened 2,000 years ago? With God, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. It's been 2,000 years since the church was established, but in God's mind, it's just been two days. And so we do not know when God is going to send Christ back to judge the world. It might be soon. It might be in the next thousand years. It might be in the next 10,000 years. We do not know. But the decision will not be ours. The decision will be God's. And so, is Christ coming again? He is absolutely, definitely coming again. Well, the next question is, when will Christ come again? When is he going to come back? Not one person on this earth knows the answer to this question. No signs will be given for the second coming. Now we're turning our Bibles to Mark chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. Jesus says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. So Jesus tells us, but of that day and hour, no one knows. The angels don't know, even at the time that Jesus speaks here. He doesn't know, only the Father in heaven. And Peter, in that very next verse from what we read from 2 Peter chapter 3, in the very next verse, in verse 10, he says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. And so Peter tells us that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In years past, I have had thieves come to my house and steal my car. In the past, we had a thief break into our church building, breaking into my office, but fortunately he was looking for money and I did not have any cash money in my office, so he did not steal anything. But when a thief comes, they do not call us ahead of time and let us know when they're coming. The thief comes when we least expect it. 
and there are no signs or hints or clues in regard to his coming. And the Bible tells us that we do not know when Christ is coming again. Now, I've lived on this earth a long time, and in my lifetime, I've heard multiple people give dates for when Christ was going to return. In my lifetime, I've heard as early as 1975, 1988, 1989, 2011, 2012. There have been people who have made predictions as to the coming of Christ the second time. But all of these dates are already past and beyond. And so we do not know when Christ is going to come back, but we do know he definitely is coming. And Jesus says in Mark's account that we read in Mark 13, 32 through 37, we must be ready. We must be prepared. We must watch so that we'll be ready when Christ comes again. Well, when Christ comes back, what will he do? First of all, he will raise the dead. John 5, verses 28 and 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. And so, the dead are going to be raised when Christ comes back. And then he's going to judge the world. We get a picture of the judgment scene in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. In Acts 17, verses 30 and 31, Paul says when he's preaching to the Athenians, truly these times of ignorance God overlooked but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And so Paul tells us there's going to be a judgment day when Christ returns. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Revelation 20 and verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of of life and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books when Christ comes again he is going to judge the world he's going to separate those who are faithful from those who are unfaithful and of course the standard for that is the words of Christ John chapter 12 and verse 48. When Christ comes again, he is going to return the kingdom to the Father. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 23 and 24, and in that 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul is dealing with the subject of resurrection. In verses 23 and 24, Paul says, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, Afterward, those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. Now, according to the doctrine of premillennialism, when Christ comes back, he's going to assume all power, all authority, and all rule. But Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that when Christ comes back, he's not going to gain all of those things. He is going to deliver them back 
to the Father. And the reason he's going to do that is because he now has all authority in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And so when Christ returns, he is going to return the kingdom to the Father. And then eternity will begin. There will be just one resurrection, not two. Note the word resurrection is in the singular, not the plural, in Acts chapter 24 and verse 15, as well as in John 5, verses 28 and 29. Jesus says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Paul says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. When Christ comes again, the earth will be destroyed. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3 again, where Peter is talking about some of this subject. And we'll look at 2 Peter chapter 3, and we'll look just at three verses. We'll look at verse 7, we'll look at verse 10, and we'll look at verse 12. Peter says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Then verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. And then verse 12, Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Is Christ coming again? The Old Testament talked about the first coming of Christ, the Messiah. And the Bible records in the gospel accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Christ came to the earth just as it was prophesied. But then in the New Testament, the Bible speaks of Christ's second coming, and Christ is definitely coming a second time. However, we've learned in our study today that we do not know when Christ is going to come back, even though we know he is coming. And we've also learned some of the things that Jesus will do when he returns again. Christ came to earth over 2,000 years ago. He is going to return. And because he is coming again, we are preaching the gospel to a lost and dying world. Again, we note 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And then verse 11 begins by saying, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We know what's coming. We know it because the Bible has taught us. And what we're trying to do is warn other people of the coming destruction. I remember cases in history where, for example, a bridge has collapsed and people who stopped in time started running back towards the traffic that was coming toward them, trying to help them and convince them to stop because if they kept going, they were going to fall to their death. We as Christians know what's going to happen. And therefore, as Christians, and because we're concerned about our friends, about our family, 
about our neighbors and our loved ones, we are going to do everything that we can to give people the opportunity to avoid eternal destruction in hell, but instead to be in heaven throughout all of eternity. May each of us prepare to meet the Lord in judgment, and may we also help as many people as we possibly can to prepare for the Lord's coming. This has been a production of Topical Bible Studies, where we are always in pursuit of God's truth. Head to topicalbiblestudies.com for more resources.